With all the recent headlines, you'd think the quality of our drinking water has never been worse. But the very idea of a high quality drinking water supply is a decidedly modern concept, as in most of our lifetimes. With tremendous recent technological advances, we're measuring contaminants down to one part per trillion. That's the equivalent of one second in nearly 32,000 years. And trust me, you probably wouldn't have wanted to drink water 32,000 years ago. Welcome to episode two of What About Water? I'm Jeff Sabo, Chief Executive Officer of the Suffolk County Water Authority, which provides drinking water to approximately 1.2 million Suffolk County residents in New York. It seems incredible, but it wasn't until about 80 years ago that drinking water quality standards for municipal water systems started to become the norm in the United States. And it wasn't until the adoption of two landmark pieces of legislation, the Clean Water Act and the Safe Drinking Water Act in the early 70s, that access to safe drinking water started to be thought of as a right, both here in the United States and around the developed world. Just because we're no longer at high risk for getting typhoid or cholera from drinking a glass of water doesn't mean we shouldn't strive to serve the highest quality water possible in the 21st century. And technology has made this possible. These days, highly advanced water quality testing laboratories are testing contaminants down to levels unheard of just a few decades ago. I'm standing in the Suffolk Water Authority's Water Testing Laboratory, one of the most sophisticated in the country, and the place where we test for approximately 400 chemical constituents, about 250 more than required by the state and federal regulators. We also test at a far greater frequency than required and maintain higher standards for water quality. Generally speaking, state regulators require water suppliers to test for a particular contaminant at a given location once a year. SCWA conducts these tests at least twice a year, often more frequently, particularly if there's an issue with the contaminant being found in groundwater. For instance, we test for emerging contaminants such as 1,4-dioxane, PFOA, and PFOS at least four times a year. You've likely heard of these contaminants as they've been getting a great deal of attention. All three were regulated by New York State last summer, creating among the most protective water quality standards in the country and SCWA is in the middle of a massive effort to implement literally dozens of treatment systems to meet these regulations. Ensuring a water supply that meets or surpasses all regulations is a very complicated endeavor. So we thought we'd explain this process by giving you a window into the journey of a water sample from beginning to end. It all starts here with our Laboratory Information Management System, or LIMS. This system serves as a database for all sampling results conducted by lab staff, approximately 75,000 samples per year, producing about 180,000 test results. SCWA maintains more than 6,000 miles of water main in our distribution system, enough to stretch from here to Siberia, and we sample our water all throughout the system and at individual wells to make sure it's safe to drink. Laboratory Manager, Tom Schneider. With our LIMS program, we track and schedule required samples for our wells and distribution stations. Sampling is updated every day, depending on new sampling requirements or changes in contaminant levels. Kevin Dirk is the Water Authority's Director of Water Quality and Laboratory Services. It's an incredible tool, really. Our staff collects drinking water samples all across Suffolk County. We collect samples from drinking water wells and at points throughout the distribution system. All of these samples are put in our LIM system so that we can track and monitor results. Let's say we had an issue with a particular contaminant at a particular location. With LIMS, we can run a report to get a history of the test results, see when the issue started, and make sure the treatment is working properly and the contaminant is removed before ever getting to your drinking water faucet. If the level of the contaminant is increasing, we'll increase the frequency of testing to stay on top of it. Another function of the LIMS staff 
is to generate the labels for the sample bottles daily and to send them to our receiving department for preparation. Laboratory manager Chris Niebling shows us a typical sample kit. So as you can see, the label notes on each bottle indicate the well or distribution sample station at which the sample will be collected, the method to be used, plus any specific instructions needed, such as to fill a bottle only halfway or to make absolutely sure there are no air bubbles in the sample. These are the key steps in ensuring the integrity of the testing process. This particular set in front of me has one, two, three, four, let's see, 12 different bottles. Yeah, Jeff, that's right. That's the raw water sample kit. The post-treatment water sample kit has only five bottles. Different testing methods require different kinds of preservatives, and some don't need preservatives at all. And once the bottles are ready to go out, they're sent to the sample collection team. The sample collection team a busy group led by Gavin Marsden. Gavin, I just checked, and Suffolk County is 2,373 square miles, of which 912 square miles is land. I was not aware of that. It is, and though we don't serve all of Suffolk, we cover about 85% of it. So how do you make sure we're gathering samples from all that service territory and on a time schedule we keep? Well, we've got eight staff members on our team. Between them, they collect samples seven days a week. So they'll be collecting samples with the treated and raw water kits twice a year at minimum at our roughly 240 pump stations. But the bulk of the job is collecting samples from our 239 or so sample stations, which are geographically spaced out throughout our service territory. These are located in the neighborhoods where our customers live. They've probably seen them. They're about two feet high and green. The idea is to have them in close proximity to our customers' homes so we're testing the quality of the water that they're actually drinking. Most of this sampling is in the bacteriology department, which I also happen to supervise. We're testing for bacteria constantly because unlike other contaminants, the presence of bacteria such as E. coli in your drinking water could potentially make you sick very quickly. Thanks, Gavin. So we're constantly testing drinking water from throughout the distribution system at the well field pre-treatment and post-treatment? That's right, Jeff. We test full kits at the raw water sample points as well as the distribution sample points. Let's take a quick break from the lab. It's time for a water break with Seth Wallach. Jeff, I'm out here in Babylon today, and we're going to see if people drink their tap water. Do you use your tap water at home? Yes, but I have a filtered water bottle. Uh, I do use a pure filter, um, but I do need to replace that filter, so regularly right now, I'm just drinking it straight from the tap. No. You do not? Okay. No. Can I ask why not? Um, I have filtered water. Do you drink the tap water at home? I do. And you're comfortable drinking it? I do, but I run it through a filter. You run it through a filter, okay. Yeah, a Brita filter. Would you be comfortable drinking it right from the faucet, no Brita filter? Uh, I do at times, but there is a difference. I, I think that it filtered out is a lot better. Filter out is a lot better, okay. Yeah. And how do you how do you filter it? Uh, I use a Brita filter for my apartment. What about you? You're comfortable drinking the water right, right from the sink? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it obviously tastes better filtered, but I mean, I'm lazy, so <laughs> I'll just drink it out of the sink. We don't oh. drink it, we drink filtered water. Just the, the fridge filter. The fridge filter. Yeah. All right, so you may have noticed a pattern here. We asked folks if they drank their tap water, but maybe the better question would have been, what is tap water? Because time and again, we heard people say they forgo their tap water in favor of what they called filtered water. But when we pressed people on what type of filter they're using, almost everyone pointed to a carbon-based filter, like a Brita or the filter inside their refrigerator. This is probably the biggest misconception people have about their tap water. Carbon filters are great at removing contaminants from drinking water. And the reason we know that is because we use carbon filters all the time here at the Water Authority. The vast majority of water we serve countywide doesn't need filtration at all, and any water that does is already treated with carbon before it goes out into the system. Now, this doesn't mean there's anything wrong with using a carbon filter at home. In fact, you may have noticed your water tastes better when you do. But that's because home carbon filters actually remove the trace amounts of chlorine added to the water by SCWA to make sure it's safe from bacteria. When folks don't change out their carbon filters at home, they're actually inviting bacteria instead of filtering it out. The bottom line, filter if you must, just make sure you're changing out those filters regularly. 
Thanks, Seth. I'm very happy to be drinking a glass of SCWA water right now. So we're back in the Water Authority's laboratory, and Gavin was walking us through the logistics of an SCWA sample collection. Gavin also supervises SCWA's bacteriological lab, which we tend to refer to as a most important lab, since bacteria, such as E. coli, has the potential to make you sick very quickly, whereas the potential impacts of other contaminants, if they ever reached your tap, and I want to note we have a tremendous track record of making sure they don't, would be over the long term. Gavin's back now to switch hats and to talk about this vital SCWA lab work. Gavin, in this lab, time is of the essence, right? That's right, Jeff. Any distribution sample we take in, we run the same day. So the sample that we're following today has just arrived in the bacteriology lab. Tests will be run within eight hours and perhaps as little as an hour or two from collection. And that's not just because we're talking about it on a podcast that will go out to thousands of people. No, this is all part of our regular protocol. Excellent. So walk us through this important test. Well, first we enter the sample information into our database. Then what we'll do with the water sample is filter 100 milliliters through a membrane that lets the water through but would capture any bacteria present in the sample. The filter then goes on an agar plate which contains food for bacteria. The plate is then placed into the incubator at body temperature for 22 to 24 hours. Body temperature is the ideal temperature for bacteria to replicate. So we're feeding them and putting them in a comfortable environment so they can replicate? Sounds like we're coddling them a bit. Well, you could look at it that way, but it's the ideal scenario for a colony of bacteria to grow, which is our goal. If there's E. coli in the sample, we want to see it. We don't see them often, right? Hardly ever. We will see a few atypical colonies, but like 99% of bacteria, they're not harmful to health. Also, as a follow-up to any presence of bacteria, we'll collect a resample to make sure there's no E. coli present or total coliform, which is a large collection of different kinds of bacteria. E. coli is a subgroup of total coliform. Gavin, thank you for your time. My pleasure, Jeff. So that's the journey of a typical sample, one of tens of thousands tested by the SCWA lab each year. But before we leave the lab, we need to talk about all the other work being done here. The testing for volatile organic compounds, metals, water quality characteristics, inorganic compounds, and more. We're constantly adding new chemical constituents to our list to make absolutely sure that we're always providing our customers with water that is safe to drink. I'm here with our top lab staff, Kevin Dirk, and laboratory managers Tom Schneider and Chris Niebling. Guys, first a general question. What else should we know about the work that you do here at the lab? Well, that we operate seven days a week. There's 50 chemists, technicians, and clerical staff working at the lab. We all take our job very seriously. We drink the same water as you do and want to make sure it's of the highest quality. We're also looking for the next emergent contaminant so we can start testing for it and stay ahead of the curve. So, Chris, what do you see as our greatest challenge on the horizon? Yeah, Jeff, probably the greatest challenge ahead for us is finding and implementing treatment for any new emerging contaminants we might find. Traditional treatments such as the use of granular activated carbon works well on certain compounds, but not so good on others. So is the testing technology available to us keeping up with our needs as new contaminants are discovered? The technology is available and rapidly improving. We have the expertise and equipment to test for new potential contaminants. If and when any new contaminants appear, the Suffolk County Water Authority will be up for the engineering challenge. We even had one of our test methods patented. What Tom is referring to is a test for PFOA and PFOS, one that one of our chemists developed that is quicker, less expensive, and detects at a much lower level than the US EPA approved method. Assistant Supervising Chemist, Amanda Commando. Yes, that is correct. I've developed a novel method for testing for PFOS compounds. Um, A lot of benefits for the lab, which include we can detect much lower detection levels. Um, The cost is less. Uh, We use less consumables. There's less waste. Um, It's less labor intensive, and we have a much quicker turnaround time. The old methods, you would have to extract and concentrate the samples. So you're looking at two 
between two and four hours of processing time for one sample. Um, with my method, we can get our results in eight minutes. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. That's going to wrap things up at the SCWA Laboratory. Please join us for our third episode of What About Water next month when we'll take a deep dive into a topic that everyone is very familiar with, the COVID-19 pandemic. More specifically, we'll be talking about how we were able to keep water flowing to our customers uninterrupted, even at the absolute peak of a health emergency. What About Water is produced by Jeff Sabo, Tim Motes, and Seth Wallach. This episode was developed by Tim Motes and engineered and edited by Seth Wallach. If you enjoyed What About Water, be sure to rate us and leave a review. Help spread the word by telling a friend and by following the Suffolk County Water Authority on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, I'm Jeff Sabo. I'm Warren to the Long Island Water Pod podcast. Oh, yeah, Suffolk County Water Podcast. Yes, I'd love to be a guest on that one. <laughs>